Awesome. Hello. How's it going, everyone? Um, good? How's the day? Good? Yeah, you sound super enthusiastic. Um, it's the last talk of the day. Uh, I have the privilege of having the last talk of the day. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, you can be in anywhere else, but you are here, which is awesome. Um, so I'll be mindful of your time. Um, uh, this was sort of a last minute talk uh, that has been evolved from a couple meetups uh, talks that I have thrown together. Um, and just quickly, the Node folks uh, on the weekend were like, hey, you want to do a talk? And I was like, yes. Um, cool. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit uh, about things that you may not know about NPM and some cool stuff that we're doing. Um, that said, before we get started, last talk of the day, I'm sure everybody's tired. Would you do me a favor and all stand up? Okay. We're going to get the blood. Yeah, we're going to get blood circulating, okay? And if you can, give me a big stretch. Right up. And take a big deep breath. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And exhale. Okay, you can sit down. Got some oxygen in your heads now. Uh, hopefully, last talk of the day, you'll listen and retain some of the information that I've got. Uh, awesome. Cool. So let's get started. My name is Darcy Clark. Um, that's a cool little astronaut hat. Uh, I have a background as sort of a developer, designer, speaker, uh, entrepreneur, mentor, UX advocate. I love designs. Um, my official title right now is the engineering manager for community and open source at NPM Inc., um, this small little company. Um, uh, this was a good note. I stole this idea from Miles this morning um, that opinions are my own indeed. Um, the love I give is also my own, and so the love I give to you, it is mine. Um, and I give it to you as a real human being, uh, free of charge, and we can have hugs later if you want. Um, they're free of charge. A uh, quick show of hands. Who writes JavaScript? Yes, you are my people. Uh, who writes Node? Okay, even better, you're at the right conference. Um, <laughs> NPM, who uses NPM? Great, thank you. Thank you. Who uses Yarn? It's OK. That's, all, that's OK. We're all friends. Uh, anybody use Yarn with the PMP flag? Anybody try to test that out? No? Plug and play? OK. Uh, anybody use PMPM? Anybody? Hey, cool. Like, OK, cool. You're probably like thinking, is he having a stroke? What's PMPM? Uh, cool. Uh, so I'm sure everybody has run this, right? Anybody run this today? Anybody? Yeah? It's a couple. Roy, who works on my team. Um, so you do this a lot, right? Um, you do this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and your CI systems are probably running this, right? They run this a lot, even more, a lot, a lot, a lot, lot. This is sort of the Bart Simpson like, writing on a chalkboard type thing. How many downloads do you think are installs uh, or package downloads do you think are in a month? And for the folks, don't go cheating and go check what it is. Any, any ideas, guesses? Across all NPM in the last month. Last month. 32. Whoa, OK. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I like that. I like that. Anybody else? Any, any guesses? 100 million. 100 million? Anybody going to go for like one Price is Right style? No? <laughs> yeah, OK, so we are 58 plus billion. So you guys really like to install. You folks like to install. Uh, packages, right? Um, and just to show you a little graph uh, about this sort of exponential growth, uh, NPM celebrated its 10 year anniversary um, a couple months ago, and we have this nice little video. I'm not sure if we're going to have audio. So we're 10 years old as of, I think, September. jQuery moves plugins to NPM. <laughs> awesome. Huge milestones, right? NPM 5 is released in 2017. NPX. A lot of people use NPX. Anybody? Yeah, nice. One of the best things in the world, yeah. Holy cow. 
So over a million packages published. That's awesome. 10 years. Cool. So that's all awesome, but let's look beyond that, right? You do this thing a lot. You know it a lot. A lot. You probably know it really, probably know it better than I do. Um, so let's talk about these things, these, these disparate things. Um, we're going to talk about the PacuMint. How many know what that is already? Not a lot of people. Great. Sweet. I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that you don't know. We can talk to a little bit about sustainability, uh, the community, maintenance and contributing, and a few other things. I'm even going to showcase some cool stuff that I don't think you've seen yet. So what happens when you install sort of the Coles notes here? Um, we actually fa fetch this thing called a PacuMint. Um, and so the NPM CLI fetches the PacuMint. And that has a reference to where the tarball lives, where essentially your package is actually living at rest. And we go and we download that tarball, unpack it, and do a bunch of other stuff. So PacuMint, if you're wondering, yes, it is just a really, really uh, hacky word that we threw together. It's called it's a package document, right? So if you ever hear uh, node, node folks talking about PacuMint uh, objects or PacuMints, they're talking about package documents. Fun, right? Cool. It's kind of like codec, right? Everybody know codec is like also like, yeah, OK. Well, I don't know. I, I, a lot of people didn't know. That's like just like compression and de decompression, codec, put it together. Really cool. Sorry? Coder, decoder. Yeah, coder or encoding. Um, cool. So this is what it looks like. This is a, uh, sort of the shape of this object. It looks a lot like a package JSON, right? Um, it's got a bunch of information in here, uh, but it's got some information in here that you may not have thought. It's got references to maintainers. Uh, it's got references to all the versions that you've published. Um, and actually, if we look, I can show you a live version of this. So here's Lodash's uh, PacuMint. It's sort of, uh, it's got things like disk tags on it. Um, this is mutable data that essentially uh, NPM uh, controls. And so let's say you add or remove somebody from your team, the maintainer's uh, object will update uh, accordingly, right? So this is not immutable data. Uh, this is mutable data um, that is not a one-to-one -one mapping to your package JSON, but it's something a little bit more substantial. And you can actually go and check out uh, this information. Uh, the URL is just registry.js.org and then the package name, right? Cool. So if you take away one thing uh, from this talk, and you're like, Darcy told me one thing, when you hear PacuMint is not equal to a package JSON file. It is mutable record. Um, and NPM is typically the source of truth for all your packages, in most cases. Uh, if you've ever used Yarn, uh, Yarn has a, a alias, or essentially a C name, um, which I forget what the actual domain is, but we actually map right directly to our, the NPM registry. So if you're using Yarn, you're actually using the NPM registry still. Um, and for GitHub package registry, um, if you can't find the package in there, if GitHub can't find the package information, um, it will actually just proxy uh, down to NPM, which is, so NPM, uh, the registry is essentially the source of truth for NPM packages. Cool. So that's a little bit about sort of in interesting information that, uh, about your packages you may not know um, and sort of high-level concept around that. Um, let's talk a little bit about open source sustainability. So did anybody get this prompt over the summer? Anybody see this? Anybody use standard JS, right? Uh, 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 ran uh, a little experiment um, to try to figure out a way or a mechanism to help funding, uh, fund, fund um, his open source efforts. Um, and so what they were doing there was essentially running a post install script to generate an ad in your terminal, right? That sounds kind of uh, messy, and it is. And it's not necessarily something that we, uh, that we think is actually good for the community. So NPM, unfortunately, uh, had to sort of enforce our policies and, and say, you know, advertising in your terminal, post install scripts, uh, this is sort of abusive. We don't want to see these types of things uh, happening. This is definitely something that we don't think is good for the community. That said, it was, uh, you know, definitely a symptom of, um, of something that 
that we know that we needed to address, which was how do we support open source software development? How, we, how do we make it uh, economical and sustainable for developers to essentially make money through their, uh, through their work, work? And so we wrote this blog post in uh, late August, uh, and the key here was <coughs> we noted, uh, we know this has been a long time coming, NPM's in a great position to help address this problem, uh, and the time to solve it is now. And just so you know, I've been at NPM for all of about four months, and this happened to coincide with me starting there, so this became my number one goal is to, how do we help or make a difference here? So as of NPM 613, we landed something called funding. Who's heard of funding field? Anybody? Nice, nice. Anybody using it? Anybody define it for the packages? Wes, nice. Roy, hopefully you tested it. Um, <laughs> Roy in the back works on my own team. He's actually the person that implemented it in the CLI. So the funding field looks like this. Um, and this was a, a spec in sort of a shape that we uh, had been seeing uh, other third party sort of uh, teams like Open Collective, and the package maintenance working group had also started to draft a schema around this, this type of field that would help define um, a reference to uh, a means for you to drive traffic for, specifically for uh, an option to fund your, your open source development. So this is what it has. It's a, it's a funding field, and it's got uh, two keys there, type and URL. Type is pretty uh, ambiguous right now. Uh, we don't actually have any kind of like um, way of sort of transforming from the URL back down to, um, let's say, GitHub. And in the future, we could see this being utilized for uh, things like foundation or corporate, or the, the terminology could eventually uh, become more meaningful. But right now, the type is, is pretty, uh, pretty much there for decoration. The URL is a really important piece uh, in, this, in this spec. So. Something interesting now happens as of npm 613. When you run npm install, you get this nice little prompt. Three packages are looking for funding. Now it's going to change. This number changes every every time you run this. But what we are doing is essentially bubbling up when your dependencies have defined this field. We are bubbling up the fact that you know somebody has um, explicitly noted that they would love if you could help fund them or that they have a mechanism for you to help fund or give them, give them money. And if you run the npm fund command, it will actually print out uh, this nice tree, uh, do some deduping as well, which is really nice, um, and showcase these, these references. Uh, and then if you actually run npm fund with the name of the package, it works very similar to npm repo in which it will try to figure out uh, where to essentially open up a browser and, and where to send um, traffic. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here I've got a terminal, and this is, I'm gonna say what version am I on, 6.13, awesome. If I run npm init, yes, I create a new package JSON, I install some depths, I'm gonna install this nice dependency I've made called sleepover, it's really fun, it's cool. Um, and I've defined the funding field in my package JSON. So if I run npm fund, it shows me my information. So I have a GitHub sponsors page that I referenced. And if I run npm fund sleepover, it actually prompts and opens up that page, right? So you can immediately go and, and donate or become a sponsor to me. Um, feel free to buy me a coffee if you'd like. It's only $5 a month to support me. Um, shameless plug. Uh, cool. So this, this is something we think is really meaningful, impactful. It's really just the first step um, in, in us trying to help solve this problem with the, commu with the community. And we're, uh, we're excited about where we think it can actually take us and, and uh, sort of moving forward. And I've, we've got some, some cool stuff coming down the pipeline that I'll talk to um, in a couple minutes here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, about the community. So for NPM, uh, over the last few years, uh, we had actually, actually last year, we sort of jumped over and started using uh, discourse forums to, to run most of our community uh, discussion through and discourse through. 
And we've actually uh, since uh, archived that uh, discourse forum and uh, are now driving uh, our community back to GitHub and GitHub issues. Uh, we reopened issues on the CLI, which was, which was much uh, appreciated, I think, by a number of uh, you know, uh, folks in the community. Uh, and if you actually go to the landing page today, you'll see um, a number of uh, pieces of information about um, a public events calendar that we now have available, um, references to our documentation, um, our more tailored support portal, um, as well as the archive for, for uh, forums, which still do exist. Do exist. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about maintenance. So uh, if you ever want to know the health of, let's say, the registry, you can always go check status.npmjs.org. But there's actually a new project that we've kicked off, my team has kicked off, um, called the essentially the project status board. So you can actually go to our GitHub org, and you can go check out the health of all of our open source projects. And we're starting to bubble up this information, not only for our own team to identify where we need to essentially uh, fix or increase test coverage or update licensing or terms or what, you know, uh, what packages have uh, vulnerabilities, uh, but it, uh, which will help define essentially where we, we spend our time. But this is great to also showcase and, and be proud of um, when, let's say, the test coverage is 100% on a bunch of packages. It's great to show the, the community that this, uh, that we're, we're working hard here. So this is a sort of a net new um, tool that we're using. Uh, it's inspired by Wes, Wes Todd, uh, who works on package maintenance working group works at Netflix. Uh, he built something very similar for Express. Um, and we sort of took this concept and have been running with it. We've got some really cool features here. You can show and hide columns. You can be like, who, you know, who still supports like MPM or Node version 0 0.8? Yeah, no joke. Like, I think we need to like archive that project. Um, so yeah, and test coverage is like terrible. So we need to need to get that in shape. So this is really, uh, for me, as in terms of like an engineering manager or, or a project manager or product manager, this is really good because it helps identify um, at, in sort of a, a high level view the, the health of our projects at NPM. So contributing. So uh, if you're a contributor to open source or you're considering contributing to open source, uh, we've been trying to evolve and, and sort of grow the story of how you can contribute to NPM and our work. Um, we do, we are usually radically, as radically transparent as possible. You can actually go check out our Kanban board. You can go see like how many people have like an open Jira or Kanban board that, you know, like everybody in the world can look at. Anybody, anybody, there's a couple, yeah? Wow, okay, if you may be in the open source, there's a couple teams that will have like an open GitHub projects board. Um, I don't know any other team that does this, so I just can't wait until somebody like makes fun of me for like how I've named my columns or when we like start to move our epics around. It's gonna be real fun. Uh, but you can actually go, we've started to use Zen Hub, so it essentially adds a layer on top of GitHub projects uh, or like GitHub issues and, and uh, pull requests. This is what our board looks like right now. You can actually go see what we're prioritizing. You can see how we're prioritizing the work that we're doing. And you can actually go, issues that you'll make and PRs that you'll make will actually land in this board. And you can see how they move across uh, from a backlogged ticket to a to-do, to something that's in progress, in review, uh, done, and then closed off. And uh, we're really excited about this um, and sort of sharing this with the community. You can actually see how we're operating day to day. Um, and hopefully, you know, it becomes a, a nice source of truth for um, us being that just radically transparent with uh, the work that we're doing. Uh, awesome. So we also have obviously open uh, issues and PRs now. Issues were reopened on the CLI, which was really nice. Nice. We have this uh, concept of uh, RFCs, so you can actually, uh, you know, request a feature from us, from NPM, the CLI, the registry. Um, if you go to uh, our GitHub org, and at the very top, we have a project called RFCs, you can actually create a pull request and ask, or sort of outline a feature that you'd like to see us implement. Um, and going further, we've started to run 
OpenRFC calls biweekly, taking sort of the learnings from the Node Foundation, the way they operate, and the OpenJS Foundation, um, and running biweekly meetings that anybody can join. We stream them uh, on YouTube, uh, and you can actually join the Zoom calls. You can see here's some lovely faces. You can go, there's archived, I mean, I'm in the middle of saying something here, Roy's. Uh, yeah, Roy's. You look pretty disinterested. Um, but yeah, this is awesome. So it, it, we're creating these sort of artifacts about how, you know, how we're operating and why we're, the, we're making decisions. Uh, and we're also hoping that you, know, you will come collaborate with us, um, have discussions with us, uh, and you're totally enabled to, to come do that. We're, we'd be excited if you came and joined us. Um, we've got a number of these calls now um, on, our, on our YouTube page that are, that are backlogged. Um, uh, so as well as we have docs, um, that's a reference to our old docs. Uh, I had, may or may not have a link for you to use uh, to go check out our net new docs. Uh, you can go to preview-docs.mpmjs.com and you'll actually see a new experience. Um, we're currently still baking this. Um, but it is the most up-to-date actual source of truth for, for our docs. We're going to give them a nice little rebrand and refresh, which is awesome. And we're hoping this is going to really help. Um, we're going to include search in this as well, something that people have asked for years, like, hey, can I search the docs? Can I easily like navigate? Um, we know that's been tough. We're trying to fix that. So if you go to preview.docs.mpmjs.com, you can go see this new experience. It's awesome. Um, Cool. We also actively, my team actively works very closely with the Node Foundation. Um, we're, we're sitting on some of the working groups, including the package maintenance working group uh, and the tooling working group. Um, so if you're ever like looking around uh, and trying to see what we're doing in the open source world, you'll probably find us uh, in those calls. So what's next for NPM? What's some cool stuff that I can share with you? So coming down the pipeline, we have the concept of multiple funding entries. So Jordan Harvin, uh, who actually uh, works on MVM. So who uses MVM here? Lots of folks, right? It's awesome. Uh, which just got recently pulled into the OpenJS Foundation, which is awesome. Um, yeah. Yo, Joe's like, yeah. Uh, it's awesome. And he's been helping us. He wants to see essentially that idea of you know, a single record for funding turn into you know, multiple records that can be utilized for, let's say, multiple maintainers, or let's say, maybe Patreon links, or something like that, right? Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunity here, and, and we're currently sort of sussing out the RFC for it. NPM 7 has been on our backlog for a long time. We're actively working on it, and we have uh, queued up uh, the concept of workspaces, which we know people have told us for forever. You know, we have workspaces in Yarn, Lerna, like we want them from NPM, it's coming. Uh, also with the refactoring work that we've been doing, uh, there's a whole bunch of performance wins that we've been seeing, um, and it's just cleaning up the code. Uh, we are hopefully going to have uh, NPM 7, a version of NPM 7 staged, uh, and ready to be consumed, not, not ready to be released fully, but uh, in early Q1. Uh, stage publishes, and scoped auth tokens are something that I'm championing internally right now um, to try to sort of sophisticate the uh, uh, CI publish workflow for folks. Um, and if you're interested in this, feel free to ping me afterwards. There's a lot to, that's going into this. There's a lot of discussion that's going into this. And the last thing here is package exploration and package diffing. I'm sure you've always wanted this, right? Why has this never been a thing on npmjs.com? Like, why the source of truth for my packages is npm? Uh, why do I have to go to GitHub and check out a repo, which may or may not be the same thing? So, who would like a demo of some cool stuff? Yeah? I can't hear you. No? Yeah? Okay, sweet. So, I'm going to demo some stuff for you right now. Uh, try to go as quickly as possible. But what I'm going to demo is actually live right now. Uh, we pushed yesterday, and there were some folks that I'm not sure if they're here. Uh, no, Jason Miller from Google sort of uh, undercut me 
uh, quickly. Oh, and PS, I was like, I knew you'd want to see a demo, so I was like, nice, cool. Um, so he quickly found this, and I'm sure if you've already been to the website, you may have seen it already. We've been making some edits to npmjs.com. We've been making some improvements. First of which is some you know, CSS love, uh, which will continue to happen. The mobile experience right now isn't great. We're gonna continue to, to make that better. Um, but what you may or may not have seen, uh, we now have a nice new tab on your package pages. Uh, can anybody figure out which one's new? Explore, Explore right, cool, cool. You're like, woo, Darcy, come on. Uh, oh, low dash doesn't work, okay. Uh, actually, am I logged in? So we have a, and I'm, I'm gonna start to show you. <laughs> what, Roy, you're giving me a hard time? Oh yeah, okay, React. Um, so two things to note, actually. So this is a perfect example. Thank goodness I went to this first. Uh, and I told uh, JDD, if he's in the audience, which he's not, uh, that I'd go low dash first. Um, this is a very limited beta. We haven't fully baked this. There's lots of features that we're gonna be rolling out uh, soon. Um, but this is definitely something that we've heard everybody wants. Uh, if you go to, let's say, React, you can actually go around. This is there's limited availability as well. So uh, your user account has to be a paid Teams to get access to this today. Although we'll be rolling out to everybody in the in the future. Go ahead. So is this expanding the tarball, or what's the React Core repo? Or what? Nope, it's expanding the tarball. This is the source of truth, which is also why you might see this nice little integrity and SHA sum value at the bottom here. Uh, just to let you know, this is exactly what is in the registry. And you can click around, you can look at you know, your files, and you can be like, oh my goodness, like, this is crazy, Facebook. Um, and some really uh, crazy, we're gonna look at some licensing here stuff. Um, what's really interesting is, oh, you get like versioning for free, so let's go to like an old version of this package, 6.11. And we go back to the Explore page. Let's look at package JSON. Look at this, I'm on 6.11, pretty awesome. You'll notice that the install script has also been updated so that it actually adds the specific version you're looking at. So you can copy and paste that and quickly install that specific version. Um, so there's all these little tweaks, there's all these amazing um, things that we are rolling out uh, from our team, from the team at NPM. Thank you very much. You'll notice some other, other improvements in the sidebar. Everybody was getting tired of seeing GitHub everywhere on your package page. It's like they owned the world, right? Like GitHub, GitHub, GitHub. It's like, come on, like there's, there's my name's in there somewhere, right? GitHub.com slash Darcy Clark, right? So we re reopened, re-expanded the URLs for, for repos and, and home pages. Um, this was sort of a pain point. People were not, you know, like this didn't look very good. Um, we also have now bu bubbled up the unpack size information there. Um, we know that there's other uh, community tools, bundle phobia, et cetera, that uh, provide also this sort of metadata. Um, we're, we're working on you know, giving you a better experience uh, online here. So, cool, uh, maybe there's a better, yeah, I know, come on, Roy. Whoa, man, come on, you're like giving away the, here, we'll, we'll show you one more. Is this mount good? Yeah, this, this one has like, is like super deeply met nested uh, like information. Um, cool, so let's go to a package page that has defined funding. So my cool little sleepover package, look at that. Look at this new little button, right? So uh, again, uh, very similar, you know, GitHub sponsors and, um, you know, uh, Open Collective. There's a, no, a million different ways for uh, open source developers now to try to make money. We wanted a way, a mechanism, again, to, to make this meaningful. So when you define that funding uh, field, we now will add this uh, button to your package page. It quickly will, as you would guess, when I click it, it's going to take me to that, that link, right? Um, and yeah, so like lots of cool little improvements. Over time, we imagine this to you know, expand when we have multiple funding. We're gonna have some new capabilities there and there we uh, options. Uh, Roy, am I missing anything now? We good? 
Think we're good? Are you sure we're good? Well, we can, uh, I don't know. Is there anything else? I don't know. I think we're, I think we're good. Um, so that's just a few. Sorry? So we do have RunKit. Um, so if you've ever like gone to a website uh, or, or, or NPM package page, sorry, have you seen this little button? You click on it, it takes you to RunKit, um, which you can actually start to play with, let's say, uh, the NPM package. Um, just so you know, this is, I do have code maybe sitting on a branch for having this embed in the actual uh, website itself. So that may be coming as well. So if I say sleep, let's say pulling this guy out, I'm going to say sleep for 200, two seconds, then we'll console log. Hello, and you can just. Uh, this, this library, sleepover, essentially is using Atomic's wait to, to halt execution and then do something. Um, so this is actually running in the browser. So yeah, this is a sandbox in REPL in the browser if you've never seen it before. So you, this is on every package page. Uh, so kind of fun to be like, if you want to try something, you can just click on that button, try it out. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, cool. So I think that's about it. I think that's all I got for you. There may or may not be an extra commander here or there that you can run to, to see some cool stuff in your free time. If you happen to run NPM Xmas, it might do something. Um, but yeah, uh, again, uh, I'll be here actually all week. Uh, the collaborator segment uh, for a lot of Node.js folks that are Node.js Foundation folks are getting together on the 13th, 14th, um, where we'll be discussing sort of the future of, of standards, spec, uh, and for us, NPM. Uh, so feel free to, to join us at that. Uh, you can follow me. I have the sweet handle, Twitter handle called at Darcy, my first name, pretty sweet. I get a lot of Mr. Darcy references. Feel free to uh, follow me there. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>